Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. In this video, we're gonna talk about the day nine episode of Praxis Prepper Alien Invasion. We're gonna talk about some of the discussion points and topics that are brought up in that episode. And at the very end, we're gonna share with you a sneak peek of what's happening next time on the series. But before any of that, if you haven't seen the day nine episode, here's a link somewhere around. You can click on it so you know what we're talking about before we talk about it. Wait a moment. Okay, we'll jump right in. But first I wanna thank three people who made last month, made March the uh, double Alien Invasion episode month that it was. Uh, we did that because we achieved our 85% funding goal and the people that uh, jumped on board last month that helped us do that are JL Petty, John Harmon, and M. Reed. Thank you guys so much and thank you to everyone who's been supporting the series, you know, you know, throughout to, to keep the whole thing going. If you've also been watching my channel for a while, you know that the whole quality of my channel has been allowed to come up. Uh, and that's because the people that are supporting this series aren't just supporting the series, you're really supporting the entire channel, raising the quality, allowing me to put more time in on it. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to create these higher quality videos for you guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, thank you all so much for allowing that to happen. For this month, um, in order to make this a double Alien Invasion episode month, uh, let's say 90% funding goal. Uh, at the moment, we're at 85% funding for, for the series. If we can get that to, to 90 for this month, that's just a couple more contributors, uh, you know, I'll release a second episode on the third uh, Friday in April. So if you guys are interested in having that, or if you just appreciate the higher quality of the series in general, Patreon link down below. You can jump on there for as little as a dollar a month, support the series, get an extra episode out for the uh, month of April, uh, and uh, help to support, like I said, just the general improved quality of the entire channel. So enough talking about that. Let's talk about what's going on in this episode. So this episode is primarily about survival caches, uh, you know, emergency caches that you would bury around. Now, if you're kind of new to prepping and preparedness, the idea of an emergency cache is the idea of getting your eggs from out from being just in one basket. You know, most people have their stuff in their home, but let's say, you know, who knows, uh, Jabba the Hutt uh, or Darth Vader. Darth Vader riding on Jabba the Hutt comes to your house. Jabba the Hutt sits on your house, takes a massive crap, it's acid of course, melts the whole house and whatever's left, Darth Vader cleans up with his lightsaber. So if that happened in a collapse environment, and we've all heard about something like that happening, you're kind of up Shit's Creek because you've lost everything. Everything was in that one location and if you lose access to that location or if that location is destroyed, you've lost everything. So the idea of a survival cache is to put things out remotely in other places and it could be as elaborate as an entire new retreat location with a, a structure and everything, or as simple as the idea of just having, like I did in the video, a bucket with some stuff in it. Uh, and there's all different ways of making the, the buckets. Uh, you know, I use just a five gallon pail because it's what I had available to me uh, in, in the video. But uh, you know, if you go to a hardware store, a lot of people have talked about a, kind of a, what I think is a clever idea, taking kind of large diameter PVC pipe uh, and you can put ends and fittings on it and make kind of survival tubes that are, would be very watertight that you could bury if you, well, if you make them properly, they're very watertight that you could bury, uh, you know, all over the place that wouldn't cost very much money. They'd be very, very secure. Um, so, so that's another approach to that. What my character is putting into the survival cache uh, isn't kind of the other topic of this episode. It's like, what, what, you know, what do you really need if you lose everything? What do you want to have? And what my character does is he hasn't really prepared for this. He hasn't really thought about it that much. He puts in a lot of food and kind of things he brings with him camping because he knows that that's what he needs when he's away from his home and he can kind of live off of that stuff. So that's what he starts with. And he puts some ammunition and a firearm in there. I can't stress enough. The ammunition in the firearm thing is recklessly dangerous. I would not at all recommend doing that. Okay, if aliens invade, you, you have my blanket permission to, do, to pull a stunt like that. But for you know any other times, that is would just be reckless to the extreme to be burying you know unlocked firearms out in the landscape. Don't do that at all. Again, if the aliens invade, go for it. But uh, you know, I don't even know if I should say that. <laughs> Use your own judgment. <laughs> So anyway, he puts those things in there. What would you think would be your critical items to put in there? What do you think would be some things you would definitely not want to be at without? Job of the Hut shits on your whole house, acid melted away. What are you going to need over the next 24, 48, 72 hours that you would want to have in a container like that? I'd love to hear your thoughts below about what things you would put in your survival stash. Additional to that, where would you bury it? The, where, the way that I buried it in my episode is I, I went out into the woods and I live in an area, it's very forested, it's very desolate. I could go out to the woods and stand in a place probably for six months and nobody would walk by that place. You know, I live in a place where it's like that. Not everyone lives 
in that kind of environment though, if you live in a suburban or certainly an urban environment, you know, you're not just going to walk down to Main Street, find a, a tree growing along the side of the road and like, you know, start digging a hole there. You know, someone's going to ask you about that. So uh, where would be the places that you would want to put your survival stashes? Where are the likely places that you would be evacuating through if you were leaving that area? And would you put your survival stash kind of along that route? A lot of people talk about the idea of state parks or, or something along those lines. Is that something that you've thought about? Uh, and you know, how would you get the stash in there? And I, I don't know what the laws are regarding what, you know, burying something. Certainly don't bury firearms. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, but you know, even, you know, just burying food in a container or something like that. I'm not sure what the you know, the laws would be regarding that. But I, I would imagine that if you walk into a state park with, with like a shovel and a bucket, it's probably going to get frowned upon at the very least. Uh, well, here's an example. Hey, good morning, officer. How's it going? Oh, you hit a body camera on there. That's nice for like quality control. Uh-huh. All right, that's, that's pretty cool. Say, aren't you a little short for a state trooper? Sir, what are you holding there? Oh, oh this? Uh, it's just my walking stick. You know, I you know, use this when I go on hikes. And Sir, that looks like stuff. a shovel to a me. Shovel? Shovel. I guess it does look a little like a shovel. Ah, yeah, I always wondered about the fluting at the end there. Yeah. So no, what are you hot. holding in your uh, other that? hand? Oh, that. Uh, I don't know. Is, is, that, is that a pine cone? Sir, that is not or a something? pine cone. I, I just found it on the ground. I, is that uh, human? No, no, it's not human. I, I wouldn't be burying human remains in the woods or. Uh, uh, Yo, dead. <laughs> Looks like this spider caught himself a fly. Okay, um, that wasn't actually the clip that I thought that, that's a similar clip, but that's actually one from my personal library. Um, just ignore the latter, latter part of that. Uh, but it, you know, the, the gist of it is still the same, you know. You don't, you're not going to want to walk into a state park you know, with a, a shovel and all this stuff. So you would want to kind of go in, in in a way where you're not going to get asked questions. Again, you got to check the local laws. You know, I don't know what your local laws are regarding that, but you know, or you can kind of keep it, you know, to yourself. That's probably a good thing. Uh, so if you were going to do that, I would highly recommend using the shovel that I used right in this episode, that fold-up SOG shovel. It's a really great one. I've had that one for many years. It is a really rugged tool. I can't see that breaking unless I, like, severely abused it. Like, you know, tried, like, running over it with my car or something like that repeatedly. I, it's, a, it's a really rough tool. I'd, I'd highly recommend that. I like a lot of SOG products. I've been made fun of for liking SOG products, but... I don't know. They seem pretty well made to me. I don't know. Um, so that would be a way that you could put the shovel in your pack, go in, uh, you know, get in the bucket, you know, you gotta, you gotta figure that part out. You know, maybe you're doing the tubes thing, whatever. But um, that would be an approach to do. But where, where are some locations that you would think about doing that? So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that in the comments below. So without any more blabbing about that, the clip from next week. Next week is a special episode for reasons that you'll find out in just a moment. I've been very excited about releasing this one to you guys. Uh, I think you're gonna like it. It's very different. You'll see why in a moment. That's it. Thanks for watching. We got somebody on the radio. Oh, what? Check it out. We copy you perfectly, Prepper Princess. Good morning. Over. Awesome. Where are you located? Over. We're calling out of New England. Where were you? I'm located in the Bay Area of San Francisco. How are you holding up? Over. We're doing all right up here. We have some. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.